This is the series where I decided I was going to start a new business, but not only start a new business, I was going to do it on a $500 budget. I was really inspired to do this to help that college girl that was me in 2015 accomplish her goals and have a little bit more guidance. I've really enjoyed building different e-commerce brands and having a few successful ones of my own. So here on YouTube, I wanted to challenge myself and not only start a business, but only have a $500 budget. And throughout all the stories that I've had, I've never done this on a $500 budget. I wanted to challenge myself and hopefully inspire anybody who is wondering or wishing or thinking or doubting that they can do it too. So welcome to my series and I hope you enjoy it. What's up y'all and welcome back to my channel. Salut à tous et bienvenue sur ma chaîne. So today is the day that I am finally dropping this series that I've been working on for so long. I've had an idea about this for the longest time. I've been working on it for the longest time and I am just ready to drop it. I started a challenge inspired by you guys and inspired by myself to start a business with a $500 budget. Now, when I first started my business, I definitely didn't have a $500 budget. And I was also inspired because I'm starting two new businesses and those are definitely not on the $500 budget. But this is basically gonna be a boring video about the trademarks, the licensing, um, domains, things like that. So let's go ahead and just get right into the video. Okay, so starting off with one of the most important things is actually getting a seller's permit. Now, and before I get started, let me just go ahead and put a little disclaimer because I'm not a professional. These are the things that I did that I know how to do to the best of my legal ability. So if you guys are not in California or you guys are in California and you guys are taking my, don't, this isn't an advice video, this is a how I did it video. So just take everything that I say with, um, you know, a little grain of salt and do your own research. But first things first for me is getting a seller's permit so that I can actually buy merchandise to sell. How you get a seller's permit is going to cdtfa.ca.gov. Now this is where you get a seller's permit in California and then from there you're gonna go to permits and licenses. And then from there you're gonna click register online and then under the register tab you're gonna click new and then you're gonna click business activity or location and then it's going to ask you to sign into an account or to create an account. I already have an account, so I'm just going to basically go off of the way that I did it because I already have one. And then it's basically going to ask what you're selling because there's different permits and licenses when you want to go into selling things like alcohol, tobacco, um, certain electronics and things like that. But I'm just selling clothes, so it's going to be pretty simple for me. And then it's also going to ask what kind of entity you have, whether that's a sole prop, a S corp, a C corp, an LLC. Um, when I started out, I started out as an individual. It's also going to ask you for your social security number, your ID, your visa, your military ID, or your passport. And then you're basically going to fill out the rest of your information. I can't tell you guys how to fill out the information because I don't know what businesses you guys are starting. But as far as clothing, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. And I got my sellers from it instantly. Next thing that's super important is getting a website. I personally love, 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 and probably will always love Shopify. Their back end is amazing. Their e-com support is amazing. The apps that they have is amazing. The templates are amazing. It's super easy to use and you can really get a back end look at the analytics of people who are buying your products, where they're coming from. In my experience, I've tried Wix. I tried Wix a long, 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 long time ago, like in 2013, 2014. I know they personally have up their back end, but for me personally, I'm good and safe with Shopify, and that's what I'm rocking with. Now, another good thing about Shopify is they do have a 14-day free trial where you can basically try out the website, see if you like it, you can design it, and see if it's something that works for you. After that, then they do go into different plans. I believe the plans start at $29.99. Um, $79.99 and then $299. It all kind of just depends on what you're actually needing for your website. I personally started out with the $29.99 plan and it's worked for me. Another thing that you're going to need is a domain. Now, a lot of these websites where you can host and, and have your website on their platform will allow you to have a domain for free, but it's going to say .myshopify.com or .mywix.com. And one of the things that was really important to me when I was starting my business is the integrity and the overall look and feel of the brand. 
Even if you're just starting out, girl, you gotta act like you, you got everything in line and in order. So one of the things that I chose to invest in was buying a domain, especially because I knew this was gonna be a long time brand. It's something that I invest in my time, my energy, my money into. So I had no problem buying the domain. Now Shopify now offers you to get a domain through them, which is only $14 a year. But since we are on a budget and it's really, really tight, I'm gonna go check on GoDaddy. GoDaddy is actually where I pretty much got every single one of my domains that I've had throughout my all, all of my drop shipping companies and my e-com companies. I also like GoDaddy because they also allow you to have an email with your domain at the end. So like for example, info at thefindguru.com. It just adds that professionalism to your business and the integrity of your brand, in my opinion. So if you go to GoDaddy, not only can you search to see if the domain is available, it will also give you other domains that you could possibly choose from if your domain is not available. So the domain that I'm looking for is available and it's only $11.99. But there's this little thing called privacy. Now, one of the crazy, scary things about being a small business startup owner is that because you have a business, everything that you do in your business is public record. So you wanna be very careful because if you're just starting out and you're using your home address, all of that information is public record. So if you put your address as um, the address then it goes up online and anybody can basically find your address so even though it ends up being more than it is on Shopify I am going to buy this privacy just to make sure that my information is protected now at this point in my career and in this point in, in business I do have uh, virtual offices that you guys can get from iPostal or PO boxes that just because I am starting out and I know that a lot of other people are starting out and they might not have a virtual office or a PO box I'm gonna pay that extra fee to have my privacy protected which actually brings us to $22.16 for our budget so that's the first thing that we budgeted in the next thing that's super important is a trademark now trademarks are pricey so it's not like we're gonna actually file for a trademark but we want to see if the company that we are trying to start is already trademarked because you wouldn't want to be that person who spends all this time and effort branding and getting everything started run the business open up shop and then you start booming and you start going and then you find out knock 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 uh this this name is already trademarked you guys basically need to stop doing business under this name so before you get started go ahead and look up that trademark to see if you can conduct business under that name the easiest way to look up a trademark is going to uspto.gov then you're going to go ahead and click trademark and then from there you're going to search for the trademark through the database and the way i always do it is i just do like a basic word search so that anything with that name could basically come up and then from there you're going to type in the name just to see if anybody has it and then if they don't have it then you can go ahead and start using it if they do have it you want, may want to reconsider choosing a different name Another thing too is you can see if the trademarks are active or inactive and in that case you could kind of like consult with a legal, legal professional to see what you want to do moving on in that direction. But my biggest thing for me personally in choosing these brands, I personally always wanted to check beforehand even if I couldn't afford a trademark at that time because I wouldn't want to be that person, like I said, who starts a brand, doesn't look up the trademark, it ends up booming, and then somebody comes knocking on my door talking about that that's their company and I can't use it. Now, another good thing with trademarks is there's different classes of trademarks. So if you open up a, a company called Rosewater Ivy and it's under the class of clothing, if somebody chooses to open up Rosewater Ivy under like spas or services, then in that case, because it's under two different classes, there is a chance that your trademark would get approved. Once again, that's something that you would have to consult with a legal professional, but I'm just giving y'all a little bit of game on that. So just do that before you get started. The next thing that you want to do, which is basically going to be the bread and butter of this business, is open up an Instagram account and a Facebook account. So the number one thing that's most important is actually Facebook and not Instagram because Facebook actually has all the back-end analytics that's going to make your company in the future thrive. So to make a Facebook account is super easy. I'm pretty sure you guys already know how to do that. If you don't have a Facebook account, you need to make one because you can't make a page business account unless you do it through a personal account. So first, make a Facebook account. Then you're going to want to click in the corner and click create. And then you're going to click page and then you're going to choose, in this case, I'm choosing a business. After that, it's going to ask you to basically put the store name and also the type of business. And then it's also going to ask you to upload a photo. 
and also upload a cover photo. Um, so next, you're gonna wanna connect your Facebook to your Instagram. So to connect to IG, you're gonna go to settings, and then from settings, you're gonna go to account, and then from account, you're gonna go to business account, and then you're going to connect it to Facebook. Most of the time, if you have these within the apps, then it kind of automatically connects, but I'm gonna just put a screen recording so that you guys can see exactly what I did. The reason why Facebook is actually more important in this case than Instagram is because there's something golden called the Facebook Pixel. Now, the Facebook Pixel basically tracks every single person that goes to your site and is able to tell you their buying behavior, um, certain demographics, things that they're liking, things that they're clicking, things that they're adding to their cart, things that they've gone all the way to checkout and then they stop and they abandon their checkout, things that get the most clicks, things that get the most hovers. It's basically gonna tell you everything. And then in, th in this case, a lot of people don't like this, but I know all of us have been on a website and we're trying to buy this dress or trying to buy these shoes and then the next day we're on Instagram and then we see an ad for that exact item. That's basically because of the Facebook pixel. So the Facebook pixel allows you, once you have the budget and you're a little bit more knowledgeable to target Facebook ads to people who have already clicked on your items. So this Facebook pixel is important. So to get this Facebook pixel, you are going to go to the business manager and then from the business manager, you're gonna go to the top of the three lines and then go to pixel. Then you're gonna create a pixel because you don't have one. This is a new Facebook account, new business account. And then from there, you're gonna create a pixel and it's gonna take you through everything step by step. Facebook is super easy to follow because they give you pictures and, and then from there, you're gonna go to Shopify and the preferences and you're gonna add your pixel in there and I will show you that in a later video. Another thing that is beneficial when you're starting a business is to get an EIN number, which is basically a replacement for your social security number so you're not using that for everything. That basically concludes today's video. Those are the basics that I needed to start my business in a legal professional manner. Once again, this is not advice. This is basically just what I did to conduct my business and start my business up. If you guys have any questions, please consult a legal professional. I'm not a legal professional, so I'm not gonna be able to answer your questions. Also, something that I don't say that I need to start saying is please, you guys, like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. This is video one of the series. Don't forget to check out video two or stay tuned to video two if you're watching this in live time. Thank you guys so much for watching my video and I will see you in the next upload. Peace out.